What's going on, everybody? RJ Ochoa here from SB Nations, bloggingtheboys.com. Hope all is well wherever you are. We hope you're happy, safe, healthy, and that you are excited because we have actual Dallas Cowboys football to discuss. We have actual Dallas Cowboys football to show you. We're going to be recapping every Dallas Cowboys practice all throughout training camp here on the Blog and the Boys YouTube channel. So make sure you do subscribe so you don't miss a single thing. And today, Thursday, July 22nd, Ezekiel Elliott's 26th birthday is the day that was the first practice. Practice. Now, let's go ahead and dive in. Like I said, we have practice notes, we have highlights, we have some other informational things to discuss. So either buckle up, kick back, whatever you want to do, it's time to fly. Now, we do have three kind of main winners from practice numero uno. And let's say right now there was the first practice. There's no need to, you know, stretch ourselves out and, and reach to any kind of conclusion. There's no need to really freak out positively or negatively one way or the other with anything that we're going to hear or discuss because it's still very early. A practice is in the books and that's a very good thing, but we can't draw any legitimate conclusions here, especially about players that we have so little information on. But that being said, the standouts from day one of Dallas Cowboys training camp from top to bottom, you have Trayvon Diggs in year numero dos looking to make himself out to be the elite cornerback that we all know he can be. You have Nashawn Wright, people. That's right. If you are one of the people who's saying, I believed in Nashawn Wright from day one, you're probably a liar because there weren't a lot of people who believed in Nashawn Wright when the Cowboys used a third round pick on him a couple of months ago. But I'm glad that we're all being proven wrong. Finally, you do have the aforementioned birthday boy. Ezekiel Elliott looked really good. Is apparently down in the weight department. We will get to that. Uh, very good news, very good stuff overall. So let's go ahead and let's kind of unpack this because this day, Thursday, was a day filled with a lot of news. But let's talk about practice first. Now, I mentioned Trayvon Diggs had an interception in seven on seven drills. Again, just seven on seven. So nothing to really freak out about. But that's what we want to see. He's picking off Dak Prescott. We all know we agree. Yes, we agree that Dak Prescott is an elite quarterback. So Trayvon Diggs picking him off is something we want to see. And what's more is that Trayvon Diggs apparently went and talked some trash to Dak Prescott. I love this. I love this so much. I, I love when corners have that attitude. And yeah, you know, there's obviously you can find an example of any NFL player that's been successful if they've been a talker, if they've been really quiet, if they've been somewhat in between. I love as a football fan, as a Dallas Cowboys fan, when my cornerback, my star cornerback, my elite, my badass cornerback is out here talking trash after pick, uh, after picking off. I was going to say making off after picking off a quarterback. Even in the first practice out at training camp, this is what we want to see. This is the attitude. This was a defense last year that was really meek and, and really kind of, you know, inward. And granted, Trayvon Diggs is a pretty quiet individual, and he was a rookie last year. But I love this. I love this growth. We've seen his brother, Stephon Diggs, is a really loud NFL player, a really loud personality. So it's nice to see Trayvon Diggs really, really, really starting to find his own. Because you look at it, this team did not walk away with Patrick Sertan or with J.C. Horn in the NFL draft but they did draft Nashawn Wright. Like I said, we'll get to him in a moment. Um, and, and so this is really Trayvon Diggs' secondary. That's what we want to see. We want to see Trayvon Diggs ball. We want to see Trayvon Diggs dominate. We want to see Trayvon Diggs kind of hold court and own this whole situation because, you know, that's that's the way it goes. Now, by the way, on the subject of uh, the Cowboys cornerback room, it was reported on Thursday that the Cowboys will work out former Vikings cornerback Holton Hill. Uh, the Cowboys do have an open roster spot. Uh, as, you know, as we all know, they entered training camp because they had released uh, Mr. Robinson and a few days ago, but Either way, Rashad Robinson no longer part of this team. We'll see if Holton Hill fills his spot. Now, it was an unfortunate day before we get back to the positive moments of camp because one of our friends, one of the guests here on the Blog of the Boys YouTube channel over the last couple of months, Francis Bernard, went down with an injury. The Dallas Morning News is Michael Gelkin tweeted out, Cowboys linebacker Francis Bernard suffered a hamstring injury during the first hour of practice. Disappointing development for one of the top undrafted rookies in the team's 2020 class. He is done for the day and the fact I don't want to read into this I'm not a doctor but the fact that it was this tweet from Michael Gelkin came out while practice was still going on the fact that that was known that early is generally not good news now we're all rooting for Francis Bernard like I said we had a great interview with him a couple of months ago if you didn't see it go back and check it out in the feed on our channel um, but this is not good obviously the Cowboys have a lot of bodies at linebacker Francis Bernard talked about wanting to really excel on special teams this year and so hopefully he gets healthy hopefully he's back 
back and hopefully he's able to really show himself off sooner rather than later um quickly before we get back into kind of the news and before we dive right into all of the highlights that we've compiled for you courtesy of all of our friends in the media uh the cowboys did announce or rather it was announced on thursday morning even before mike mccarthy took to the podium for his standard press conference that there are six players who are starting camp on the pup list espn was first to report that the dallas cowboys have six players on the physically unable to perform list and what's more is that they actually have seven players out in totality because wide receiver tj vasher is on the nfi list on pup we have amari cooper demarcus lawrence tristan hill greg zerline chauncey golston and mitch hyatt this is not ideal but it's not a big deal one of those sort of situations uh amari cooper wasn't active really in mini camp and so this was really predictable demarcus lawrence again not ideal mike mccarthy did mention in his press conference that demarcus lawrence had back surgery this offseason he also mentioned that greg zerline had surgery and that's certainly concerning anytime you hear that i am be honest with you i'm gonna shoot straight with you that is concerning I'm not overly concerned, uh, especially because there's no reason to rush Demarcus Lawrence or Greg Zerline or any player here. Uh, but it is, you know, on the one to 10 panic scale, I think it's maybe a two to three. It's, it's a soft two to three, nothing to really, really freak out about, but just something to pay attention to. Um, now, for what it's worth, I, I do think if you're looking at all these players and this is training camp, so the pup rules are different than what they are during the regular seasons. So they can come back at any time. They don't have to sit out a mandatory time period or anything like that. But if we're looking at these players and who could be impacted the most by being on the pup list to start camp, unfortunately, I think the answer is Tristan Hill. Uh, I've been higher on Tristan Hill than most people. I think he played moderately well last season, although to be fair, the bar was really low for him to clear because of his rookie year in 2019. Uh, but however much time Tristan Hill is going to miss is going to be more time and more opportunities, more importantly, for other defensive tackles to really kind of make a name for themselves. We know how many young defensive tackles are on this team now. Neville Gallimore last year. You look at, obviously, this year, you've got Osa Digizua, you've got Quentin Bohana, you've got Brent Urban coming in. I mean, there's a lot of bodies in that position group now, and so Tristan Hill missing time is really, I think, going to impact him more than it's going to impact any of these other players. Uh, I think, you know, Mitch Hyatt is somebody who can't afford to miss this time, but I, I think Mitch Hyatt's already kind of facing an uphill battle when it comes to making the roster anyway. So um, definitely a different sort of thing. But uh, we hope all is well with all these players soon enough. Now let's go ahead. Let's dive into some highlights again. Shout out to all of our friends uh, in the DFW media space who were able to be out at camp and provide these uh, you know fantastic people all over the place. Uh, let's start with a clip of Michael Gallup and CeeDee Lamb just kind of working out, getting things going. This comes to us from John Mishota of The Athletic, and this is very exciting to see. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's nothing, but I love it. I mean, I missed it. This is this is life. This is this is that first sip of orange juice in the morning. You know what I mean? No pulp. Um, it just it just puts life in you. It just feels so good. Uh, but that was you know that was a little little spoonful, right? A little here comes a spoon. Um, and so now let's get into some some more exciting things. Um, you know, before we really get excited, let's show you Demarcus Lawrence. This tweet comes to us from USA Today's Dory Epstein. Demarcus Lawrence again on the pup list, but still doing some work, being involved, which is good to see. Last one before we really dive in, I promise. Uh, it was Ezekiel Elliott's birthday on Thursday, and the crowd out in Oxnard, because fans can attend Dallas Cowboys training camp, they serenaded him, and that's always a nice thing to see. That video, courtesy of NFL Network's Jane Slater, happy birthday, Ezekiel Elliott. Enjoy the age of 26. Now, Zeke's probably going to enjoy the 2021 season because his offensive line is back. The important thing about the Cowboys who started the season on PUP, started training camp on PUP, is that none of their starting offensive linemen are there. Tyron Smith is healthy. Lyle Collins is healthy. Zach Martin is healthy. Tyler Biotis is healthy. Connor Williams is healthy, obviously. Left to right, right to left, middle to left to right, whatever. You're all good, 100%. Everybody's back. You're ready to roll. Let's take a look at Tyron Smith and all his glory, courtesy of DallasCowboys.com. Dave Hellman. Just, just, 
it had been so long since we'd seen Tyron Smith. I mean, it had been so long since week two of last season. So seeing Tyron Smith in any capacity is a really, really, really exciting thing. Great to see him looking healthy. Great to see him looking strong. That is the Tyron Smith way. What I can't wait to see is the one-on-one. So we've talked about that in so many different ways. We've talked about some some training camp battles we're looking forward to, and we've really stuck to kind of the same position groups, right? Like, oh, who's going to win out at QB2? Who's going to win out at tight end? But I can't wait to see the one-on-ones. I can't wait to see Tyron Smith against Demarcus Lawrence, although with D-Law on pub, that's going to take a while so in his stead in his steed i don't know if it's stead or steed but in his place randy gregory is obviously going to get the lion's share of that work and randy gregory looks awesome according to dallascowboys.com kyle yeomans I know. I know. I haven't been as optimistic as you all have been on Randy Gregory, but you know what? I'm getting roped in. All right. Randy looks great. Those long arms of his out at work. And the fact, and we've all talked about it, he's going to have a full off season, a full training camp, a full preseason for the first time since his rookie year really is going to go a long way. And that is certainly something that I think is very encouraging for the state of this defense as a whole. Now, ultimately um this defense and and you can you can make this argument in a billion different ways like how is this going to work is the defense going to be better because they're going to be working against this great offense yeah i think so dak prescott cd lamb are going to hook up a lot this is the year of cd it's the year of a lot of people but it's the year of cd the year he really establishes himself the year he reminds the nfl that he is the best wide receiver from the 2020 nfl draft class and he looks like he is well on his way The Athletics, John Mishota snagged that clip. Mishota's so good at getting these training camp videos. And Mishota was one of the only people who had this video. This one I want to get you prepped for in the proper way um, because I don't know how to hype this enough. Uh, Nishan Wright, again, has really faced the longest road so far among the 2021 Dallas Cowboys draft picks. Nobody believed in him. That includes all of us. When we did our live show, nobody really had ever heard of him. Um, and so, you know, in some ways that kind of helps, right? Because if you can do anything, you can surprise a lot of people you can make it feel like you're really kind of cashing in on that value but he's doing more than that Nishan Wright had an incredible PBU and is really starting to justify why Dan Quinn and the Cowboys defense believes in those old long arms of his oh yeah Oh, yeah. And that is not it. I mean, Nashawn Wright was a busy man on Thursday. That's why he's one of our winners, one of our top performers of the day. DallasCowboys.com's Christy Scales also had a Nashawn Wright clip, and it is just as exciting. We're just kind of sitting on the ground. This is what we want to see. This is exactly what I want to see. I mean, this this is we want to see these DBs, these corners, these safeties, really all defenders. We want to see them attacking the ball. That is something that has been so absent from the Cowboys defense for so long. We want to see that aggression. And we really thought we were going to see it. We thought the Cowboys had the personnel to play that way. Chida Bay Awuze had an aggressive play style. Hopefully, you know, he plays really well in Cincinnati. But we thought that that's what was going to come under Chris Richard. And that just hasn't happened. That hasn't materialized. But the fact that we are seeing the Sean Wright just be that aggressive. And part of the reason that he can be is, again, because of those long arms. And I don't want to, you know, just stick to that low-hanging fruit and and – if it was low-hanging fruit, Nishan Wright would get it easier than anybody else because of those long arms, but that makes a difference. That is a quality that the Cowboys obviously loved in Nishan Wright, and he's proven it because Nishan Wright can go out there and disrupt those passes, can force those incompletions, can go up and get tip balls that other players can come down with for interceptions. That is is the goal. We want to see this team generate far more turnovers than they did early last season. Yes, Mike McCarthy's told us a million times how they did better at that, or they were better at that, rather, over the second half of the season. Yeah, it's because you played some bad teams, some bad quarterbacks. We want to see this week in and week out, and if Nishan Wright can help contribute to that, which he's showing already on day one of training camp as a third-round rookie, then all of a sudden we might be cooking with gas. And 
Overall, look, the Cowboys, we all know, added a lot of players to this defense over the course of free agency, over the course of the draft. It was really a defensive-heavy offseason in general. One of the more exciting players that I think people have kind of forgotten about just because he's also kind of quiet-natured. And it's weird that this has happened because he's also switching positions in true legitimacy. Keanu Neal, now linebacker for the Dallas Cowboys, a part of things on Thursday, a part of the action, and forced a fumble. This is what we want to see. Shout-out to Derek Eagleton, the go of Cowboys media coverage of everything they do over at DallasCowboys.com for this incredible clip. Force and fumbles, generating turnovers. However it happens, we don't care. We want to see that ball on the ground. We want to see the Cowboys players come up with it each and every time. This is a team that has an incredible offense. So the more they can generate turnovers, the more they can put that ball in Dak Prescott's hands. Mike McCarthy talked about over the entire offseason how this is Dak Prescott's team. He talked about on Thursday in his press conference how the game is built around the quarterback, how the idea is to make the quarterback as good as you possibly can. And if you can do that by giving him more opportunities to score, if you can shorten the field that is a really really positive thing in the overall context of your football team and your overall football goal so uh Keanu Neal Nishan Wright I mean these new additions shining on the first day of training camp again I don't want to like sell you all this hype and say Cowboys are winning the Super Bowl but this is really good I think if if you could have asked for something to see on the very first day, it would have been all of this stuff. This is this is a very positive step forward. It doesn't necessarily indicate anything specifically, but it is very good news nonetheless. Um, two last clips before we get to some other things here. Uh, we mentioned that Zeke was a winner and obviously got the birthday serenading, serenation, serenade. He was sung to for his birthday, uh, but Zeke Elliott looks good. And this clip, which again comes to us from the Athletic Star Mishota, I want you to watch Zeke, but I also want you to watch Micah Parsons because the way he closes on him is another reason for us to be excited about him. This is why the Cowboys believed in Micah Parsons with the 12th overall pick. Now, I realize, again, not a big play, not a big deal, but I'm going to put it up one more time because I want you to pay attention to how Micah Parsons just sheds off his block and all of a sudden, look, I know Zeke's not the fastest running back in the NFL, but closes the distance between he and Zeke. These are the types of plays that have become big plays against the Cowboys defense, whether you know they're playing against your Alvin Kamara's or even if you're playing against a CJ Anderson. This is the type of thing that when you add up all these tiny little things that what this is, it goes a long way at changing your overall defensive identity. Nice to see Zeke looking great, too. We're going to get to some more Zeke stuff. But before we do, last thing, I uh, want to give a huge shout out to Dan Quinn because it does seem like his effect is, is being really seen within the Cowboys defense. Certainly the drafting of Nishan Wright looks really smart right now. Dan Quinn had his hands all over that. But Dan Quinn, after practice, working one-on-one -on -one with Micah Parsons. This is incredible. This comes to us from Michael Gelkin of the Dallas Morning News. I thought it was really interesting in his press conference on Thursday, Mike McCarthy referred to himself and the entire Cowboys coaching staff as teachers. And that's really what coaches are, right? They're teachers, teachers of a craft, teachers of a specialty, teachers of, you know, a philosophy. And this is something that is so small. And I'm not trying to make a mountain out of a molehill, but th this is a big deal. Now, somebody who I believe was a really great teacher for the Dallas Cowboys as a coach, and I know this is a you know, controversial opinion for some people is Jason Garrett. For all his flaws, Jason Garrett was an incredible teacher. And you may have forgotten, maybe you do remember, but at Cowboys training camp, after practice was over, Jason Garrett and Dak Prescott used to play a little game. In the middle of the two practice fields, there's a big tower where the Cowboys brass sits and watches practice from. And they would throw footballs and try to hit the star because they had all the Cowboys logos on it. And it, it's just a mild thing. It's a small thing, but it goes a long way of building that relationship, building that chemistry. And obviously the relationship and chemistry between Dan Quinn and Micah Parsons is 
is vital. It's not just important. It's not just pivotal. It is vital to the success of the Cowboys defense as a whole. We all believe that Micah Parsons is going to be involved this season heavily, both as a linebacker and as a pass rusher. And so getting on the same page, teaching him, molding him, taking that time, being patient after practice, that one-on-one, that face time, that goes a really long way. And establishing that routine on the very first day of practice, it, it just, to me, it speaks to the humble nature, the, the quiet nature, the, the, disciplined nature of Dan Quinn and how he wants to go about molding his team, molding his players. And I'm really excited about this. I'm really, I'm so much more pumped about Dan Quinn as the Cowboys defensive coordinator today than I ever have been to this point, because I do feel like he, he puts in the time. This is very different than what we saw from Mike Nolan, who wasn't as hands-on in this particular way. Dan Quinn is, is clearly a teacher and clearly somebody who's trying to get the best out of Micah Parsons, the best out of Keanu Neal, the best out of Nishan Wright. And that is really an effect that is being seen even if it's only through one day of training camp now last thing for us to discuss Zeke Elliott uh, took to the podium on his birthday like I said a very big Zeke day Um, and he did mention his playing weight currently or at least what he's at at the moment Zeke Elliott if you care is weighing in at 218 pounds which um, is apparently the lightest he has been since his freshman year at the Ohio State University now Maybe you're going to make a lot out of this. Maybe you don't think it's a big deal. It is definitely a big deal. I think it says that Zeke has taken this particular offseason very seriously. He obviously had a very down year last season with all the fumbles and all the situations. And obviously, there was a lot that went wrong on the Cowboys offense. But this is a very positive thing. And I'm not trying to jump into the Zeke is back camp. But I definitely think that the, the, the Zeke revenge tour... I think they're selling tickets. Like before, I didn't even know if they were going to get off the ground. But the Zeke Revenge Tour is starting to sell tickets. They're starting to book some venues. And this is exciting. It was This was a very, very positive first day overall. You know, Thursday was a really interesting day across the NFL. It was reported that the National Football League as a whole um, is not going to reschedule any games this season for teams that have COVID outbreaks. And obviously, this is a polarizing subject in our country and in our world. Uh, but last season, as you know, the league was adjusting, rescheduling, on and on and on. The Cowboys were victims of that themselves. Their Thursday night game against the Baltimore Ravens got pushed all the way back six days to a Wednesday night. Uh, the game Des Bryant had to miss. I mean, there's a number of examples from last season in the NFL as a whole. Uh, but the league announced they will not be rescheduling any games in 2021. That if a team has COVID protocols that they have to enter where they're unable to play, that team will have to forfeit games. And obviously, the NFL is pushing to get its players is vaccinated. We know that uh, this is the latest indication of that idea of that endeavor. Um, and, you know, a lot of players have spoken out about this. Arizona Cardinals wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins, uh, one of them on Thursday alone. Buffalo Bills wide receiver Cole Beasley has been vocal about this in the past. Obviously, former Cowboys wide receiver Zeke Elliott did mention during his press conference after practice that he has been vaccinated for what it's worth. Now, Michael Irvin, former Dallas Cowboys wide receiver, Pro Football Hall of Famer, Ring of Honor member, I mean, the playmaker, we could list his accomplishments forever. Uh, had some comments that started this week that a lot of people felt a certain way about. We discussed those on the Blog and the Boys podcast network. But if you care, uh, for whatever it's worth, Ezekiel Elliott has been vaccinated. And so we'll see if any other Cowboys are vocal about this. Uh, but it seems like the NFL is... Again, I don't want to say going out of their way to punish people who are not vaccinated, but they're going to make life much more difficult for those who are not vaccinated. The idea, generally speaking, is that they are encouraging players to get vaccinated to help the good of their football team. Zeke Elliott did mention that he grew up in a household where vaccinations were not necessarily a thing, but he did get vaccinated this offseason. Mike McCarthy said in the Cowboys opening press conference on Wednesday that he was initially opposed to vaccination, uh, but after consulting with some medical professionals and people throughout the medical community, that he did make the decision to get vaccinated. As you know, this is a topic and a subject that will be continuing to run rampant all throughout the NFL all season. Um, we can discuss it you know, in a civilized manner, we love each other. That's the important part. And we know what's important is we had, we just talked about a football practice. We just saw some, some clips and some highlights from a Dallas Cowboys football practice. That is very, very, very exciting. Now, We'll be recapping every Dallas Cowboys practice throughout training camp right here for you. We'll be going live after every preseason game, regular season game, after every episode of Hard Knocks. We have a lot of content coming your way at blogoftheboys.com on the Blog and the Boys podcast network. We are available on all major podcast platforms. Please subscribe, leave a rating, and write a review. And, of course, here on the Blog and the Boys YouTube channel. We have recently surpassed 10 
thousand subscribers here on our YouTube channel. We are very excited to hit another 10K, another 20K, whatever billion. Uh, thank you for being part of the journey. We're very excited to see where this takes us. I'm RJ Ochoa. If you have any comments, questions, criticisms, limericks, anything you want to discuss, you can hit me up on Twitter or Instagram. My DMs are open at RJ Ochoa. And you can also shoot me an email if that is more your speed, rj.ochoa at sbnation.com. The Dallas Cowboys practiced on Thursday. It was a very, very, very good day. Very good day indeed, people. They'll play a football game in less than two weeks. I know it's a preseason game. I know it's the Hall of Fame game. I know it's probably not something you're all pumped about, but it is still a nonetheless a Dallas Cowboys football game, and that is some really exciting stuff. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We're super excited now that football season is here, and I uh, can't wait to see what happens. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a good one. We'll see you next time.